All right, my friends, so welcome to this is lesson 3.5 on the grab and release extension. We are now to the point where it's time for a challenge. So in 3.4, if we look back at that, we are asked to have our extension, grab the cuboid, drive forward, release the cuboid, and go back to the starting position. Well, hopefully by now you're starting to see some of the limitations that we're just basing it on proper lineup, that our robot goes straight, that type of thing. Well, now the challenge is to incorporate and integrate the ultrasonic sensor to our cuboid. So what if the cuboid is at varying distances and we need to be able to bring it back uh, to our starting position? So the challenge here is to use the ultrasonic sensor to stop our robot when it's near the cuboid, lower the arm, and then bring it back to the starting position. So what we're looking at here on the screen, this is what we did in 3.4. You can go back and check out that video if you want. What we really need to do is just change this up just a little bit. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to use the left button. I'm going to keep the right button of my code here. I'm just going to go ahead and knock this out. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete these comments because they're no longer needed either. Okay, so we've got left and over here we've got right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and duplicate. So if you remember in our last code, we had a starting line. I'm just gonna use the exact same starting line, but I will use different measurements of the cuboid from where it is from our robot to bring it back, just so you can kind of compare it from previous. So what I did is I just duplicated all this code that we see here. But the first thing that I want to do is I wanna make sure that our claw isn't going down. So we're actually going to remove these blocks out of the way for now. We're going to just move forward. I'm going to look at all our code blocks here. And if I go to movement, all right, I can see here that we need to also probably change this block as well. And we're going to start moving here. And we're going to start moving straight. And let's go ahead and just keep this nice and slow. So we'll set our movement speed at 30 percent and now what we're going to do is in our events or excuse me in our control all right we're going to wait until and you guessed it we're going to bring this operator over wait until here we go our ultrasonic sensor, let's see if we can find that here in the sensor panel, there we go. I take that back, we actually don't need the operator. I always forget this awesome block is already built in. So we're gonna wait until our ultrasonic sensor is less than, hmm, what do we need? So let's go ahead and try this here. Let's go ahead and switch over to our robots and actually see what the distance sensor is going to, uh, ultrasonic sensor is going to show us. All right, so one of the things that we want to do is we want to go into port view on our robot. And so the way we do that, and I know it's a little hard to see here on the screen, I'm going to go over to these six circles and there's an option for port view. And I'm just going to go down here to the ultrasonic sensor reading. You can see here as I put my hand here, these numbers will change as it picks up and we can start to see what goes on. So let's go ahead and see how close we got to get in order for this to trigger. And so I know right here. It's showing me 3.6 centimeters. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to err on the side of caution, and I'm going to say 4 centimeters for this. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my code. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to be less than, you know, let's make this 4.5. Let's just see what happens here. And then what we want to do then initially is we're going to want to have this claw go down, if you remember. So we're going to drag that back up. We're going to go down. Okay. And let's just see if that actually works here before we do the rest of the code. So we've got it going straight, nice and slow. All right. Then when our sensor is less than four and a half centimeters of detection, it's then going to, well, we need to add a stop moving, don't we? Yeah, we do. We're going to stop moving. Then we're going to drop the claw. And actually, let's even put a weight block in here just to be safe for time. So it doesn't get too rammy. There we go. And let's see if this will actually grab uh, the claw here. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. And so one of the things that we're doing here is we're just isolating. We're breaking down our code into sections. There's no point to write a full set of code if it doesn't work originally, right? So we want to make sure that we can actually even just get to the, the cuboid and then actually get the claw or the extension to drop down on it. So let's go ahead and switch this camera here. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see if it actually works here. Okay, so it did detect. Let's go ahead and run that again here. Okay, so here we go. So you can see here the limitations to this extension is it's not very big. So I'm going to try. Okay, so let's see here. Boom. We got it. So now we just need to write a code then to return it back to our starting point. So the way we do that is now we're just going to inverse all of this, right? So we're just going to, let's see, let's see. Okay, so the key here now is we have to figure out how to get back whatever distance we travel, knowing that the distance could change from time to time. So here is one way, not always the most accurate, but I'm going to show you something new, um, maybe new to you if you haven't used this before. We're going to use the timer, and we're going to keep track of how long it takes for our ultrasonic sensor to detect an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here in the sensors at the very bottom of that category. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to reset our timer at the very beginning. It's going to start moving. It's going to wait until the distance sensor is detected, and it's going to stop moving. And what I want to do at this point is I want to capture that time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to make a variable, and I'm just going to call it timer. And I'm going to set, as soon as it stops moving, we're going to set timer to whatever that timer was at that moment. Stop moving, set timer, timer. And now we're going to wait one second, and we're going to set our speed. Let's see here. We're going to start moving backwards then for that distance. So we're going to move. Oh, not that one. Let's see here. We're going to... There we go. We are going to move backward. And we're going to use the variable for timer. 
seconds. And then we need to get, oh, we lost this. Let's see, stop moving. Got to drop our claw. Let's do this. And then we just want to duplicate this, but instead of counterclockwise, we want to go clockwise. Oh. And then we don't need that last one. Okay. So let's give this bad boy a try. We're going to reset the timer. We're going to start moving straight, detect the object, stop moving, make our timer variable timestamp. We're going to wait a second, drop the extension, then move backward for that amount of time, and then release the cuboid. It's going to work just that perfect, right? All right, let's go ahead and test it out and uh, see what it does here. Okay, so we're going to start it here nice and short distance, and I have it starting here at the start line just so you can see how the timer variable will actually bring it back to the relative starting point. This has a visual for you. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it goes. Oh. That was not successful. There we go, brought it back to the start. If I bring it out here a little bit further. Bringing it back each time, which is the whole goal of this challenge, right? It's gonna be a close one. Oh, we got it. And there you go, guys. Just one example of many. I look forward to seeing all your incredible solutions to this problem of reaching the cuboid and bringing it back. And in the Slack channel, in our conversations, let us know how could we make the limitations of this extension, this attachment better? What are some different ways to code? Let's share some ideas so we can all get better together. All right, my friends, as always, stay awesome. Peace.